Okay. The next stitch I want to show you is the overcasting stitch. And that is used to finish off a raw edge. So if you're making a garment, you can't leave it like this because over time it'll fray. And you need to do something with the edge of this fabric. Now, the G foot on all brothers is the overcasting. And what will happen is that this part of the foot here goes up along the edge of the fabric here. And it will overcast or it will encase the edge of this fabric with the thread. So this is, you can call this mock surging, you can just call it overcasting or finishing an edge. So if you're making something that is not lined, you need to finish off the edges of your fabric. So again, you just press the little black lever on the back of your foot, the foot pops off. Line this up with the groove in the foot. Now, as long as I have this edge along this edge here, I will have a perfect overcast. Nice and slow. I still have my secure stitch on over You can see that the edge of my fabric is going right against the blade on the foot. So I'm just going to speed that up a tad bit for us. going to stop for a second. I'm going to go back to my main screen here. So my options are I've got it to reverse sew to begin with. I'm actually going to have it cut my threads when I'm finished from now on. So as I go on I'm adding more and more options to my sewing. So we hit reverse and it cuts it for me. Look at that. I have now encased the raw edge of my seam with the thread and now it's not going to unravel. That's a very easy way to finish the edge of your seam. So I'm going to show you how to do a blind hem stitch. And a blind hem is very handy to know how to use when you want to hem a skirt, cuff. You can even use it to put your binding on, on your quilt. So to do a blind hem, you need to make sure you have your R foot. So let's change our feet here. Put our, our foot on. So I have some fabric that is prepared here. So this is the outside of my garment. So this would be the right side of say the cuff or the skirt or your pants. This is the hem. And what you want to do is you want to press it so that the right side has a fold in it. So this is facing the outside. This is the hem. And in order to do the blind hem stitch, 
we need to change our stitch number on our monitor here. We're going to select stitch 201. And 201 actually does a straight stitch, then a zigzag, straight stitch, and a zigzag. And you'll see that our display has changed to the R foot. So when we look at this foot, it actually has a blade down the middle. This blade in the middle will follow along the folded edge here. So the blade will go right along here. Let's just get ready to sew here. I'm old school, I always like to pull my thread and put it to the back. Okay, I've got my machine slow. Okay, so I may have to do some adjusting of the zigzag just to see if I'm taking too big of a bite or too little of a bite. You can see the blade is right on the fold, right here. It's right up on the fold. And that's where you want to look when you're sewing. Do not be looking here, because you want to keep the blade to the right of that fold. So I'm going to resume sewing now. So as you can see that my zigzag is not quite big enough, it's just not catching my fold. So I'll put my foot back down and I'm going to make my zigzag slightly larger. You always want to test this out first before you sew your garment. Depending on the thickness of the fabric, you will have to adjust the bite of your zigzag. Yeah. So you can see where I adjusted my zigzag. I've adjusted my zigzag so it has caught my hem. Now, obviously, if I was doing a hem, I would use matching thread, so you couldn't see that. And that's a great way of putting your binding on as well.